Yellowstone supervolcano magma. Scientists discover massive new magma chamber under Yellowstone. There's more to Yellowstone National Park than meets our eyes, much more as it turns out. You might already know that a supervolcano dominates the famous park that's situated in Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, northwest part of Wyoming. A shallow subsurface magma chamber has long been known, but now a second much larger reservoir of partially molten rock has been discovered by researchers of the University of Utah. There's enough magma inside it, they say, to fill the Grand Canyon more than 11 times. Seismologists at the university published in the journal Science say the magma reservoir sits below the other, shallower, smaller one, already known, but the new one is four and a half times larger. According to science, the researchers had already known about a plume that brings molten rock up to within about 37 miles of the surface, and it contains about 2,400 cubic miles of magma. The new find represents the missing link between the mantle plume and the shallow magma chamber. Peter Cervelli, geophysicist at Anchorage, Alaska, who works at the U.S. Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, was quoted by science as saying, quote, for the first time, we have imaged the continuous volcanic plumbing system under Yellowstone, and quote. First author, Sing Hua Huang, also the postdoctorate researcher in geology and geophysics, is quoted by University of Utah statement as saying, he explained, that includes the upper crustal magma chamber we have seen previously, plus a lower crustal magma reservoir that has never been imaged before, and that connects the upper chamber to the Yellowstone hotspot plume below. The statement adds, contrary to popular perception, the magma chamber and magma reservoir are not full of molten rock. Instead, the rock is hot, almost solid and sponge-like, with pockets of molten rock within it. Huang says that the new study indicates the upper magma chamber averages about 9% molten rock, consistent with earlier estimates of 5%, to 15% melt, and the lower magma reservoir is about 2% melt. So there is about one quarter of a Grand Canyon worth of molten rock within the much larger volumes of either the magma chamber or the magma reservoir. This is what Jamie Farrell says. Science notes that the discovery should not be construed as suggesting that the chances of an eruption are any higher. Whether or not the supervolcano goes is dependent on the emptying of the shallow chamber, the one on top, that is. What the study does mean, however, is that the deeper chamber can replenish the smaller one, allowing for lar larger eruptions. Now, um, they said that knowing that you have this additional reservoir tells you you could have a much bigger volume erupt over a relatively short time scale. This is what the co-author Victor Tsai said. He's a geophysicist at the California Institute of Technology in, Palace, in Pasadena. The last major eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano took place 640,000 years ago. That was a double eruption 170 years apart. There were two other known events, 1.3 million and 2.1 million years ago that were also super eruptions before that one. While the U.S. Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory stresses that the probability of a Yellowstone supervolcanic eruption is any, in any given year is very low, using computer models it has studied what, had, what might happen if it did occur. And according to USGS, the model modeling the ash distribution of Yellowstone supervolcano. The uh, super eruptions, one produces greater than 1,000 cubic kilometers of de volcanic debris, generates much interest, but also occasional confusion. New computer models can help clarify the reality of eruption impacts and provide insight in, on past eruptions. And uh, recently, scientist Larry Mastin 
and Jacob Lowenstern, and National Science Foundation Air researcher Alexa von Eaton published research on where volcanic ash would fall if the Yellowstone eruption, the super eruption, were to occur today, a super eruption. Modeling uh, 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 similar to the caldera forming event that took place 640,000 years ago. Yellowstone is an obvious target for ash distribution studies as it provides an opportunity to understand very large eruptions that generate umbrella clouds, which spread radially in the atmosphere, and the distribution of deposits from ancient Yellowstone eruptions can be compared with the output from the computer models. And just one example of the ash deposits from Yellowstone is this one here. Okay, this is obviously a uh, very, very huge formation. Yellowstone ancient super eruption is by Mark Rachel, University of Leicester. And uh, you can understand how huge, uh, you could, there's a man standing at the bottom about around the five o'clock position on the screen. Uh, you can understand how huge this uh, ash eruption was. And of course, this is just one portion of the deposits. And uh, it's not only in uh, at Yellowstone that we see things like this. We see formations like this covering a lot, many parts of the world. And uh, we have a lot of ancient construction that has been covered by ash. One of them, for example, is Golbeki Tepe in Turkey. Uh, other areas could be, for example, the uh, pyramids, the sands, the sands covering the pyramids and the Sphinx of Egypt. Uh, so there's, th this is not just the, it's not just Yellowstone that has given us this ash coverage. But going back to the USGS, now the, what about the maps showing Yellowstone deposits across the US? Don't they indicate where ash will go? Yes, they do. Now, what's the new significance about the study? And I'll leave links below for you for this on USGS. Models have been used for decades to forecast ash fall during eruptions, but only in recent years have TEFRA models, like the ASH 3D, been developed that use the TEFRA mountain that we saw before, the man standing at the base of it, um, that use a 3D time-changing wind field, enabling us to model eruptions that last weeks and spread ash across the entire continent. Okay, Ash, can you imagine? Ash coming out for weeks. I mean, what, what, what would be able to stand alive after that? Nothing, basically. Now, these features, plus, plus the development of the method of calculating growth of the umbrella cloud, have made it possible to simulate eruptions of this scale. So we learned, they say, that super eruptions distribute ash in a fundamentally different pattern than smaller eruptions by creating an umbrella cloud that can push ash more than a thousand kilometers upwind, the map pattern of ash deposits from weaker eruptions looked roughly like a fan spreading downwind from the volcano, while that from a super eruption looks more like a bullseye centered on the volcano. A powerful spreading umbrella cloud means that ash dispersal is much less affected by atmospheric winds. And what happens geologically at Yellowstone now? Seismicity and ground deformation are within historical norms. The caldera started moving up and uh, about four years of slow after a slow subsidence. Earthquakes are, uh, of course, abundant, especially after the uh, ridge crest. We have more of uh, quake swarms, which is normal. Now, is there any evidence that Yellowstone will erupt soon? No, Yellowstone is behaving as it has for the past 140 years. And geological evidence indicates that similar or higher rates of earthquakes, ground uplift, and steam explosions were experienced at Yellowstone over much of the past 10,000 years or so. Odds are very high that Yellowstone will be eruption free for the coming centuries. So I'll leave links below for you for this on um, NPR and also USGS.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.